sticking around after lunch. Um, my name is Chris Malay again. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the mobile media pilot, which we've had going for about four or five years now and have had some really great uh, faculty projects go through this program. Uh, something that was sort of unique over the last year is there were several faculty members that actually uh, used the mobile devices that we provided them to do study abroad programs with their students. Uh, and I think that there's some really great, great outcomes from these projects and we invited several of the faculty members that, that did go abroad with their students to present on their, those experiences. So uh, I thought I'd just kind of let our, uh, our panel here introduce themselves and we'll get started. Hi, I'm Karen Cackley and I teach biology courses at Penn State Lehigh Valley. And I've taken students in the past to Costa Rica, Panama, and most recently, uh, Guanajuato, Mexico. Awesome. And my name's Tammy Bennett. I'm here at University Park in the Environmental Resource Management Program in the College of Ag. And we took our students to Costa Rica last year and did the mobile media pilot. And um, we're planning to also develop a course to New Zealand. So we're hoping that's up and running and that'll be over winter break. We want to incorporate media in that as well. Good afternoon. My name is Abhinav Amma. I teach communications at Penn State New Kensington. Our students uh, in the last spring break went to Ireland. Uh, I didn't go with them, but I was in the class and the courses that uh, essentially were created for them to have an education abroad component. And we hope to do it again in spring 2015. Thanks, guys. Uh, so I thought that kind of to give you some context to start off with, uh, give each of you guys an opportunity to go uh, a little bit more in depth with with the project that you guys had assigned, what the expectations that you had for the students were, and what the requirements, and maybe if you want to show some of the outcomes from the projects, that would be great. So, okay. yeah. Well, the, the most recent project that, that I did was the students went, um, they did an online course in sustainability and ecology of agricultural systems in uh, Guanajuato. It's a state in Mexico, and it's really interesting in that it's, it has a system similar to Penn State. They have a state university with multiple campuses. And we worked at the Irapuato campus, which is where their ag program was located. And what was great was we got to have our students interact with uh, students from the University of Guanajuato. So beforehand, um, I, I, I couldn't have done this without Eileen Grodziak from our media commons and Carla Rapp. Um, that helped me with this. But we took um, iPods and what the students were, were done was it, when they got to Mexico they were given a specific research topic that they needed to investigate. So it might have been what was the effect of, of agriculture on endemic plants? What's the effect of agriculture on water use? And so each of them was given a research project. They were teamed up with students from the University of Guanajuato and then we took them around to different places and um, as we went to say maybe a, a, a strawberry farm or a subsistence farm or to a person that was growing uh, barley for uh, beer, which I didn't realize that beer is the number one agricultural export from Mexico. Um, so, and of course they need a lot of barley to make that. And so but anyway, each one of them had kind of their own topic that they needed to investigate. And so they would use the iPods to take photographs, and they all had iMovie on them, so they could take uh, video in the field. And then each day when we got back to the hotel, we were very fortunate in the hotel that we stayed in had Wi-Fi. It wasn't the best Wi-Fi. <laughs> They'd have to kind of walk around sometimes holding the iPods up. But they had to blog about their research project each day. And they would put up photos and they would put up videos. And we have a, a few of the different um, postings just up there. At first, they, they complained mightily about having to do it. But then when they started getting the positive feedback immediately from family and friends about, uh, oh, I see what you're doing. This is really great. And once they started to get that encouragement from folks back at home, um, it was really wonderful. And the other thing I think that it really helped them with was to, you're going, you have just spring break, it's eight days, you're, you're going through an incredible amount of information, you're seeing an incredible amount of things. This actually helped them catalog and keep all of their memories straight and everything that they had. 
um, experience. So when it was time for them to come home and kind of pull their final project together, they had a timeline, they had photos, they had video, um, and they had gotten immediate feedback. And the other thing is they had to give a presentation in Mexico in the Penn State room, by the way. Mm -hmm. There is a Penn State room at um, the Irapuato campus of um, the University of Guanajuato, and all blue and white with our Nittany Lion and the whole okay. thing. So they uh, gave presentations, and they were able to use those photos and those videos um, they had computer access at the university and they had been able to do like PowerPoints and make presentations right there uh, on the fly in Mexico. So it was incredible because before we had gone to Costa Rica and a problem that we'd had is we'd taken flip videos. And um, actually I have a student over here who was using one of those things. But the problem was is that um, Vinod was able to, it was an incredible project, to, uh, to um, film what we were doing, our research project in Costa Rica, and bring it home and share it with the students at the Lehigh Valley and do the same project uh, comparing Pennsylvania forests to Costa Rican forests. But the problem was, is in using a flip video, he wasn't really able to edit in the field. He could, he, so there was some footage that he wished that he had that he didn't realize till he got home and was trying to actually put it together. And by having iMovie um, on that device, it allowed them to, to view and edit and then perhaps capture anything they might have missed in the field. So. We, we went to Costa Rica as well, um, like Karen did. Um, something that we... Thank you very much. Um, something that we did a little differently um, was, I think uh, the technical report was what this class was built on um, prior, this foreign studies class. And so I co-taught the course, and one of the things that we kind of had to sell to the, to the professor would have been, um, how can we incorporate this mobile media project into the classroom and still make it an academic um, course in that, in that way, in that regard. So it was, that was kind of the starting point was the content. And they were a group of um, people, students, who would be environmental science, scientists when they came out. So they weren't real creative, right? They didn't have a real creative background. So I didn't know what kind of video we would actually get. And amazingly, you know, we had four groups, and one of the videos was very, very good. And this is Lauren Risch over here, if you don't know Lauren, and she was my sidekick through this that really helped, helped me when I had questions. Um, so we, we went to Costa Rica, we signed up for the mobile media pilot, got buy-in from my co-instructor, and put these iPad, uh, or iPod touches in the hands of our students, not knowing what exactly we would get except that they needed to support their technical reports. We broke the, the students up into groups, groups of four, and they had to have a sustainability issue. One of the issues for Costa Rica is ecotourism, um, waste management was another, natural resource protection, and um, the other one was uh, sustainable agriculture. So we went to banana plantations, we stayed at Earth University, which is very accommodating. Penn State has a wonderful relationship with them. A lot of our uh, programs use Earth when we stay there. So we went to the rainforest, and the students that were in the natural resource realm, right, that group, collaborated and worked together to uh, videotape, knowing the whole time that when they came back, they'd have to collaborate and decide what pieces had to be cut out. And so higher order thinking skills were involved. And you could see that as an instructor, that kind of taking place as you kind of stood back and saw this collaborative effort, still not knowing as the instructor what I was going to get for a video when the time came. So. As a, as a new person using uh, mobile media, if you're a faculty person or an instructor, that's one thing for me anyway that crossed my mind was what was I going to get? And also, was that really important when you're not um, communication majors? So content is what we focused on at least this year. I work with a um, Facebook social media group in our college, and they wanted to have us communicate with them back and forth and upload things to social media. We didn't have any internet access there, so that was kind of like on the fly deciding that we weren't going to be able to do that while we were in the country. So when we came back, they uh, worked in Egg Media Commons and here at Patti um, to build their video projects together. We didn't incorporate any one-button studio, but I'm doing that with my first year seminar now, and I think we'll do that in the future. So that's a little bit about our, our background on our project, and I'll pass it over and come back to me later. Should I get up on the podium, Mr. Shulman?
So uh, last year, um, I think it was around this time, Nick Smoker from uh, the Apartments here came to our campus at Penn State University and gave a presentation about um, using multimedia projects as an alternative for uh, academic projects. And um, while in communications journalism classes, I had always had some measure of the use of technology with news reporting uh, and, and planning for uh, um, news type of projects, um, it caught my attention that there was a way to do uh, multimedia research projects that would meet the expectation and the caliber of a research assignment, but would also be interesting for the students, would be fun for the students, and would uh, be a motivator for uh, student participation. So um, after that presentation, I basically started working towards that with the goal that uh, our spring uh, 2013 trip to uh, Ireland uh, would be based on a short-term education abroad experience. Our students were going to be in Ireland for less than a week. Uh, they had to leave the weekend of spring break come back by the Sunday uh, of spring break. So one of the things that was required was, uh, taken from Nick's uh, workshop, was essentially to have a timeline set up so that the students before they left for the project had demonstrated some amount of academic uh, expertise or preparation for the projects. And then uh, also to make sure that their multimedia plan was up and running. So this was something that I thought would be important for anyone who wants to try and inculcate a multimedia project in any kind of a short-term abroad uh, foreign trip. Is, uh, it is extremely important that students essentially have a timeline by which there are deadlines of preparation that are set. Uh, we had students from other courses who went on the trip who did not have these types of preparations, and we could see the difference between the students who had a plan in place and in action and those who didn't. And then I thought I would show you um, some examples here of um, the types of projects. So this is our global programs website at Penn State New Kensington. And I can just play the very first one, which is more of a travelogue kind of a video. Do we have an audio setting? So before the students uh, started planning their multimedia projects, one of the things that I did in class was show them an example of all the different types of student projects that had been completed, and Media Commons has that website set up. So it was good to show those, explain what are the things that work, what are the things that don't work, explain all the different approaches. So photo slideshows, for example, are pretty popular. Uh, this was a freshman level class, so uh, quite a few of the students had not had any video production training. Uh, Nick came to our campus and uh, we qualified for the uh, media pilot program and they got iPad minis. Uh, so the iPad mini was a very exciting update to the program and the students were very happy to get their hands on it. So this is all uh, on the iPad mini as the students were traveling through Ireland and there's a video show. Here we are driving through southwestern Ireland on the Ring of Kerry, a beautiful, scenic, 100-mile tourist trail loop. So the ability to have their hands on a new product of technology that was fairly new earlier this year was something that really inspired uh, the students. Um, they were able to get some training with Nick uh, when he came to our campus before the trip. And then there were also other students who, once they figured out that there was a multimedia project option, even the domestic students who were not going to Ireland, quickly volunteered to do these projects because they could see um, the entertainment aspect of it to some degree, as they were highly motivated to do it. And uh, most of our students who were in this class had no uh, media training, had, had no editing training. So um, I thought that given that, most of them tried very hard. Some of them just came up with fairly simple and straightforward PowerPoint uh, uh, slideshows where they laid down a voice track and turned it into a video clip. And then others did more challenging uh, iMovie projects. And then, uh, of course, our campus computers got updated with Windows Movie Maker, so many students tried Movie Maker as well. this and show you another example and not take up too much time here. Uh, and the last one I'll show here is just a very basic one where the student just did a straight slideshow 
His the interest history was of Irish in castles came from Irish their castles. early construction as wooden moats and bailey castles by the Normans to the massive stone fortresses that can be seen today in Ireland. The building of the great stone castles in Ireland started 100 years after the Norman invasion of England. By 1250, the Normans controlled three quarters of all of Ireland, and only western Ulster, Kerry, Clare, and western Galway were the only predominantly Irish ruled areas left. These magnificent fortresses in Ireland took considerable time to build, required significant labor force, and they were very expensive. Therefore, their locations were very precise for military purposes and political advantages. Okay. So, my idea here was essentially to give students a project that was not going to be an overwhelming part of their grade, so that they did not essentially feel as if this was something that was going to make or break their performance in the whole semester. But it was also significant enough to about 10% of their grade to where they had to take it seriously. I gave them some latitude uh, as to how long the project has to be as far as the time frame is concerned. This one barely clocked in at 2 minutes and 20 seconds. The others were more ambitious and up to 6-7 minutes long. Um, and as I said, uh, this particular kind of an approach also uh, inspired other students. So here's one student who didn't go to Ireland, but did his project in a multimedia format as well. And um, it's YouTube, so I'll have to do this. Since its beginning in the late 1800s, filmmaking has evolved into one of the most important and influential forms of entertainment in America. Due to the success of the industry, Films have brought in some of the highest profits of any form of media. However, data shows that only about 20% of the films in America bring in around 80% of the revenue. Even more interesting is the broad variety of films that have become the highest grossing in American film history. Now before we get started, it's important to clearly define just what the highest grossing films are. Dictionary.com defines gross profit as gross receipts less the cost of goods or production jump forward. and ship with the film's success. For example, Gone with the Wind the second oldest film in the top 10, is the highest grossing film on the list, while the most recent film, Titanic, is only three spots down. So I just wanted to show you an example of something that was not the uh, education abroad trip, but a student who essentially in the same class decided to do a domestic one. And he did a fairly good job of ma mixing and matching things like graphics, along with footage that he was able to essentially burn and copy from the internet and use as a part of his project. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of room there as far as creativity on the student's part is concerned. And I think most of the times uh, the instructors can work with the students to help shape their projects. And I kept mine uh, semester long, so the students could essentially come back from Ireland and had more time to go and edit and have some time to post, produce as well. And that seemed to work well for them. So any time that you make a decision to incorporate some new technology into your classes, you take the risk credit and like, not what they expected it to. Um, and add on to that the, the complexity that arises from traveling abroad um, and not having really an opportunity so I'm wondering, given the potential risk of incorporating mobile media into your work, what made you still want to do this? What is it about these devices or the capabilities of these devices that made you want to do this? And, and what do you expect to have happen? Well, I guess to begin with, uh, I'm going to go back to the example of where um, the first time I tried using mobile media in the field, was um, in a course where only part of the students were going to Costa Rica. And this was an optional um, experience where they would go to, um, to La Selva, which is an organization for tropical states, and it's just purely a research institution. And um, I wanted to somehow bring that experience of what those students were having back to the ones that were not able to travel. So it was only a handful of those students that could go. And it, again, it came back to using these flip videos and uh, cameras. And they were great in that they were small, and it did allow us to capture footage. Um, but it, it was kind of cumbersome to use. But I think what got me really um, excited about using it is I saw the effect it had on the students that didn't go. I did not really expect the, um, the buy-in that I got from students that were not able to go on the trip. And when we did an evaluation at the end of the semester, um, the, the students, I, I was asking them, what are some of your favorite things about the course this semester? They said, my classmates that went to Costa Rica. I mean, they were even pointing out, the ones that didn't get to go were saying, I got so much out of watching 
my comrades, I felt like, you know, they, they would, you'd mention something in lecture or we'd see something in lab and somebody in the group would say, oh, we saw that in Costa Rica and we did this and we did that. And I actually, uh, there's a, a rule in ecology that you have more species the closer you get to the equator. So we were going to do this little test, this hypothesis that of, of how many tree species there were in a, a forest segment in Costa Rica versus Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. So they, they showed the whole method, they filmed it in Costa Rica, and then those students came home and taught the ones in Pennsylvania how to do the experiment. And it was just that um, them actually watching, and I mean, it could have been, I guess, maybe, you know, well, maybe George Clooney they'd have paid attention to if he was out in the, in the forest. But the fact that they knew their classmates, they recognized their classmates, you know, pushing aside the, the, mm -hmm. you know, the brush and finding the tree frogs and the snakes and all that. And they got to, to witness that video with their classmates. And then the effect that it had on them, I thought, I don't care what problems there may be, I'm going to keep doing this. Um, it was, was so eye-opening to me that I didn't think that someone who didn't go on the trip would say their favorite part of the course was the friends that got to go. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I think one benefit was that because the students had five, maybe five and a half days uh, of in-country work, and because they had to have a multimedia plan of what they were going to do, it forced them before the trip to look closely at the schedule and figure out where am I going to get X item of mm -hmm. multimedia, whether it's an interview, whether it's uh, photographs, whether it's video. Mm -hmm. So weeks before actually going on the trip, the, the mental aspect of n having accounted for where you were going to go and what you were going to grab there was something that helped them focus on their trip a lot more, irrespective of the project. Whereas in the past, I've, I've seen and heard from other people as well that students can tend to get passive as far as things like a tour of the museum or visit to a historic site is concerned. They tend to kind of blank out. But this was this particular kind of a uh, burden and challenge that they had, that they had to focus on what was happening around them all the time. I guess I can cap it off by saying the reason that I decided to do it regardless of what issues we might run into, was that media tells a story. So each of those individual students, even though they were filming the exact same thing, maybe the angle that they were taking the footage from, or and they didn't even realize they were doing it, I don't think, you know? But when they put it all together, it told a collaborative story. So I think that's the reason why I decide decided to continue to do it and will continue to do it in the future. Regardless of the, the iMovie editing is like the toughest part when we come back, mm -hmm. we continue to um, to meet, and that's what the students will say. You know, they enjoyed the the, um, the digital storytelling or making the script as they uh, worked out the details, like you were saying beforehand. Um, but the actual editing part for them seems to be the the toughest part. But is this the first time that all of you have had this sort of creative element to your your for, for me, for us, yeah. Is it the first yeah. time? Yeah. Well, I've done them three. I mean, it started out in baby steps, and then it kind of, it kind of worked up. But one thing that I think was a little unexpected for me in, the, in, this, in this last one, which was the Mexico blog, was how many of the students turned down our equipment and chose to use their own. Yeah. Um, you, they prefer to use their own iPhones. They would pay for iMovie so that they could use their own device and they would have it. And believe it or not, they ran into fewer problems. Um, because the way that the blog worked was set up on the university, iPods added another layer. Because what did they go through? But they, they were not as successful in getting their blogs on. Something, blog press or something was put on. And uh, the students that used their own equipment skirted all the problems. Um, so it actually was more efficient for them to use their own equipment versus the university-owned university, um, university owned equipment. But at least those that didn't have it had the option of taking it. But very few of them actually took the iPods. Oh, I'll just use my own iPhone. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening it. in my first year seminar this year. Um, the students are videotaping the different resources at Penn State that are environmental resources like the Arboretum or Millbrook Marsh. And they had the option of getting um, a device from the university or using their own smartphone. So I'm finding that too. Yeah. Yeah. We prefer to use their own. Uh, about, since you use the the iPad, the iPad Many, yes. uh, which have slightly different affordances from an iPhone, did, were the, the students doing more sophisticated things with those than they might with an iPhone? Yeah, definitely. I think because of the fact that they were able to visualize the project uh, right in front of them, and um, 
a couple of them had iPads of their own, the full-size ones, so they were familiar with the technology mm -hmm. a bit. But I heard from the students that they had used those devices for everything from FaceTime with their friends and family to email to uh, social media work and then also for the actual projects. But it definitely helped for them to have a slightly larger but manageable device. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Do you guys see other uses of the devices beyond the, the media creation? No. Uh, any just kind of a la last question that I have before we kind of turn it over to the audience? Um, were there, I think some of you touched on this a little bit, were there any unexpected outcomes to this, things that you didn't have been for the pop up? I think I knew that the students would be pretty natural with it, but just the collaboration um, out in the rainforest, um, especially, I noticed it the most when. Um, because they were put in a group beforehand and their task was to gather this media, um, there was a lot of collaboration based on what their technical paper was going to be on. And that's the flat paper with words, right? But they were videoing how does this sort of fit into what it is that they're going to write about. So we had an accompanying paper along with the video project, so we had both. And so they were kind of collaborating on how that would work academically, and that was kind of cool to see. Was, was that collaboration a requirement, or was that something No, that they did it on their own, which that was an, ex an unexpected outcome, right? Yeah, and, and I was surprised by students who did not have very good research and writing skills, but did better as far as the uh, hands-on electronic media work is concerned. So that was eye-opener, that was an eye-opener to me, was that students just seem to speak better in the medium that they're most familiar with. So uh, does anybody from the audience have any questions for our panelists? Um, we sort of had a, um, the students using their own equipment. Um, did that equipment also you spoke about the no, that's not, yeah. um, you spoke about the students using their own equipment. Um, did that include like tripods or even like those hard covers? If you're going into like the jungles or rainforest, things like that. Uh, no, actually, uh, for for the students who win the mobile media project, we got the kit bags from uh, the Media Commons program, and then all we got for them were adapters for Ireland because the power right. sockets were different for the chargers. But no, they did not use that. Uh, like well, we would have in very much liked it if they had things like camera stands and so on and so forth. But um, no, no, okay. yeah, no, no, no additional equipment. So did you guys have a shaky? I, I did have some. Not too many video, that's okay. Including when a student dropped one or rolled down a hill and towards a river. He's not here though. He's not in the audience though. Where is he? And he went we after have, it. We have the footage. We have the footage of it rolling down the hill and him going to get it. He's upside down. The thing is that's awesome. um, so it's kind of interesting. Uh, just a follow-up question based on what you just said. Um, does the iMovie on... Um, on, on the different iOS devices have that um, thing to correct all of this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I'm not isn't it? Is, it is a great it's question. It's probably isn't there it? and we didn't know. Yeah, could be. <laughs> <You're welcome. laughs> I think the iPad mini, because of how it fits into the hand, naturally didn't have as much of a shake as the iPhones do. Yeah, you can see, can see much better. I'm, this doesn't have anything to do with the international travel, but this semester um, I managed to get 10 iPad minis for biology with microscopes that fit onto the camera. Oh, and it cool. doesn't require any software. You just get these little microscopes, and the only thing that you have to tell is which device you're going to hook it to so, the, so that the, um, what do you call it, the, the stand or the thing that seats so it puts it correctly over the, um, over the camera. And then they just hit camera, and they can take either photos or video. Wow. And they're taking these out into the field and you know, digging up tree roots and looking for little critters that are running around. It's a thing called BioBlitz, which a professor here at University Park started. But they didn't have this equipment, and I found these little microscope cameras. So does it so zoom in on they can, the... Yeah, it can go up to 80x. Oh. 80 cool. times magnification. So they can look at little insects moving, they can do all this stuff, and they can take it to the field. And the video I'm getting really is quite good. And I think maybe it's because they do have the screen that's, that they can see very well what they're doing, that it's um, maybe it's less shaky because they, it's, it's easier for them to focus and they realize if they're being shaky. 
uh, but and they can see, see they it. can see it, and they're using it, you know, much more readily. And we're even using them now inside for microscopes Very as well. Cool. Um, it's been been fantastic. Yeah. Hey, several times you guys mentioned how um, the 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 hardest part for some of the students was just doing the post editing. Um, are you look are you guys looking into um, other software that might make it easier, or um, trying you know, different techniques, or or maybe giving a small like tutorial on how to use was iMovie that you guys are using, whatever it is. Yeah, one of the things one of the things that we did try to do is have one person who is familiar with using iMovie in each group, and it worked out this time that way because we tried to. Um, find the students' interests, you know, and kind of group them together. So we had a person who was familiar with iMovie and then, and then um, have the groups in such a way that we had people in sustainable ag or in the natural resources and that sort of thing. Um, some of the work fell on, one thing with groups, sometimes some of the work falls on one person. So that's what I mean when I said that it might have been, you know, more difficult for some students. And then that's what I saw tended to happen uh, only in, I think, um, Lauren will probably correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was two out of the four groups, right, that found it more difficult. However, some, half of the group thought that it was amazing and easy and there were no issues. But it's usually, if you have even one issue, that's the one you hear about, you know, the most. So looking for different options, um, I wouldn't mind using One Button Studio more. Uh, we're trying that with my first year seminar class this year, and the kids just love it, you know. Sometimes I think we try to make it more dramatic or complicated or than we need to, and the One Button Studio is so awesome. You just, they put their little flash drive in, right? And, and they have this, you know, all these takes, and it seems to be more seamless for them. How would it incorporate that into um, an international course, though? They could still get their footage. I'm still thinking on that, you know, a little bit to ch make changes from last year because it was our first time. But um, they could have the footage behind them, maybe on the green screen, be able to explain it, you know. Um, I don't know yet, but I'm, we're looking for different avenues, right? And the other part is iTunes U. Do you, have, do you upload to iTunes U your, to, in order to grade it, the actual no, video? No, Okay, do you use YouTube or? Yeah. Dis okay, that's what I need to do, too. <laughs> what they're doing is um, try not to upload to I, iTunes U, because that's the other little snag that we seem to be running into, but. Okay. I, had, I heard two themes that I would like you to address a little further. One is how to keep the technique from trumping the content. And I heard you, sir, especially start to talk about that. But then your first um, video was more of a technique, uh, it seemed like a travelogue, than content. So how did you do that? That's my first question. And the second one is it seems like there are there were three priorities that seemed to make it work for all of you. One was internet access. One was actually attaching to some kind of university um, in that foreign um, placement. And another was the mobile media project. So you had those three. And I didn't know if there was anything else. So the first was technique over content and how, how to keep those balanced. And the second was, um, is there anything else besides the internet access, university access, and mobile media project that could be helpful when we're thinking ahead or planning for this? The very first one I should have introduced was essentially uh, an independent study by a student who went on this trip and did an independent study and wrote news reports about the trip. And that video was more of a kind of a travelogue video. So it was meant to essentially capture what happened on the trip to go along with the news reports. The students in the American Studies class who were looking at folk culture and influences of Irish culture on American culture essentially had to have uh, some grounding in the academic concepts that they wanted to explore. And then accordingly, they had to justify a multimedia plan for how they would find the associated content. Um, the easiest was to find photos of Creative Commons license approved uh, um, images that they could use in the presentation. And the more difficult part was to get footage of actual things in Ireland while they were there. And then there were some problems with lighting conditions and uh, not getting um, the, um, uh, the release forms from the people that they wanted those from. So I, I made certain kinds of adjustments and I was flexible in some cases because, uh, again, in a space of about five and a half days, it would not be possible for them to get 100% of what they wanted to get in that course. You teach communications also, yes. right? Yeah, so it's the communications probably content too, right? right. right? Um, do you have a question? Go ahead. 
No, I was just going to say that my students knew that they had a particular research topic. And I have to admit, I did, had not been to this part of Mexico before, so it was the first time I was going. And um, we actually had a, a, a former uh, member of the Board of Trustees and a former Secretary of the State of, uh, you know, of Agriculture for Pennsylvania that helped set this up with his connections down there. I didn't know exactly what we were going to find. Now I'm going back the second year and I feel a lot more comfortable about what they're going to see and when they're going to see it. But basically I had just given them and said, okay, you know, randomly I just alphabetized their names and then pulled topics out of hats and said, you know, this is what you're going to work on. And um, they knew when they went down there that they, were, they would have to take every opportunity they could on the different outings that we had to ask their questions for their research topic and to do what they needed to to get the, um, the footage or the films or the interviews that they needed to support their, to support their topic. And okay. the internet was really critical though as far as being able to blog and, um, and to have that contact back at home and that encouragement was huge. Did you have a question about the mobile media pilot program? Well, it, just, it seemed like that was obviously helpful. Right. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, we have a question from one of the campuses that got messaged to us. How did they grade, how did you get grade the projects and they heard that using iTunes U didn't work? Oh, okay, that would be for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> We, I actually went and viewed the video um, with the help of Lauren um, in one of the media commons. Um, I was able to view, view the videos that way, or I had them deliver them to me on a flash drive. I actually still had a student's flash drive when they came back in the fall of <laughs> next year, and they came and picked it up. So we worked around it. It wasn't a problem at all. Yeah? I did require students in my class the ones who went to Ireland and the ones who didn't go to Ireland to have presentations where they had to present uh, uh, their project, introduce it, and then to play it and uh, let it play. And at first I thought of using an applause meter, but then I thought, no, I should just grade them on the content. <laughs> but uh, again, uh, the, just wanted to point out that uh, it did really help for students to know and hear in class what other people were doing. And as soon as they could see something visible, something tangible happening, it encouraged everyone else to get their act together as well. So that kind of peer admiration slash competitive spirit really helped. We yeah. showed ours in class as well. Yeah. Well, mine didn't really have a finished product in that sense, that the mobile media per, per se wasn't the finished product. Instead, um, they, were, they had a rubric and they knew they had to do so many, they had to post a blog at least once a day and they also were graded on the project that they presented on their last day at the university in Mexico with, because they couldn't bring the Mexican students home and they were working on these things together. Mm. So we had, um, I had a grading rubric and faculty from the University of Guanajuato as well as our faculty graded the okay. students on their collaborative presentations. Um, and so that that's how it was done. So I didn't have a finished product when they came home per se. Sammy Lavinoff, did you guys have rubrics? For we, we did have rubrics, right. What are those like? Well, um, it, they weren't based as much on technique as, as content. Um, it looked at the content of um, what their subject was, whether it was, uh, you know, the sustainable agriculture or the natural resources and that sort of thing. So we looked at the content and how much that it uh, fit with their actual technical paper that they turned in. And I'd broken the grades uh, of mine along the deadlines for getting all the various steps completed. So half their grade would be pre-project, where if they had not met any of the deadlines, they lost points. And then the final chunk, half of the grade, was for the finished project, which again had to essentially satisfy certain criteria relating to the content, the presentation, and their ability to essentially present in class. Did any of you, um, or any of you up there, um, incorporate a research project? For example, you know, you as an instructor, were you researching what was going on? Um, at all? No. No? Not okay. this time. No. Yeah. Um, I'm just finding that to be a big trip <laughs> line with IRB. Yeah. Um, and I just wanted oh. to know if anybody had tried that because it's, it does add another dimension that I believe all of us need to be working intentionally at bridging that gap because it is a gap with IRB um, internationally, especially if you have people um, on video, et cetera, it becomes an issue in the research project in IRB. Um, assent and consent forms. I have time for maybe one more question. Um, 
one of the other questions from the from the audience. I guess my kind of parting question would be, uh, Tim, you mentioned a little bit about the OBS and some some future iterations of the project. Do you guys have any other thoughts for what you want to do in the future, maybe like next semester or even farther out in the technology mature? Um, looking forward to New Zealand, which would be over winter break that we're trying to plan. Um, I'd love to be able to use some of the new technology that's coming down the pike. Um, even the iPad minis would be nice to have along on that particular trip. Um, is there any underwater stuff? Yeah? <laughs> no, I'm just wondering. But, um, but <laughs> are, are they? Okay, we'll see. See if I don't ask. Um, I don't know. And <laughs> Cases, okay. See, I need to. We need. We need to talk. I, and um, <laughs> Lauren. So, but anyway, um, yeah. And I, I'd love to be able to do the blogs like Karen does. That was one of the things I, I wrote down here. Um, when you have internet access, I think that instantaneous yes. kind of thing to send back home kind of keeps the students motivated, which you saw. Yes. Yeah. So I would love to do that in the future and um, use more social media if at all possible too, because we've um, gotten a lot of followers on our ERM page, and parents are tending to like, and that sort of thing, too, yes. which is kind of a phenomenon that maybe in the past we haven't seen because of, you know, the student goes off to college, and there's not that connection, so parents are kind of interested, too, so. Okay. Yeah, I think I would, I would fine-tune some of the project expectations. Uh, I did not require a daily report. I did not require uh, social media interaction. And those are the kind of places where I felt there was a weakness as far as the performance of some of the students was concerned. But I was very happy with the equipment that we had. Your videos are great. Yeah. Yeah, I think the, da the daily, mm -hmm. making them do it at first, I felt really bad because we had very long days and very tough conditions. And... Um, you know, oftentimes we wouldn't get back until 10 at night, and they'd say, do I really need to do this? And I'd say, yeah, you do. Because I knew they'd be up anyway. <laughs> Come on, let's face it. So um, I think making them do that and, and the social nature of, of it, they would have spent that time communicating with friends and family anyway. Mm -hmm. And so by taking what was actually academic experience and making it social kind of gave them that reinforcement that they needed. So rather than just getting on and blogging about, you know, or, or talking with somebody on uh, Twitter or Facebook mm -hmm. about what they had done that day, they were actually making an, an yeah. academic experience, experience out of it, and um, it was definitely worth making them stay up a little later. To they would have stayed up anyway, anyway. but, you know, <laughs> That's great. yeah, they were doing something when they were up. Yeah. That's a good job. All right, on that note, I think we'll, we'll end it. Thank you all okay. very much Thank for sharing the